Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about target suction pressure. Target suction pressure is pretty important stuff because it gives you a rough idea if your pressure is aligned with where it should be and it could give an indication whether or not you have an airflow issue. And you can more readily identify that by putting that in conjunction with superheat and airflow readings, temperature splits to troubleshoot the system. Target suction pressure is broken up into two different categories and I have to thank Imperial for enlightening me and making me want to learn more about this sort of thing. Having the ion manifold for a while it was interesting to see the different targets it gives you. So of course whenever I see someone giving me targets or an instrument giving me knowledge, I want to figure out how it did it. And it's not that complicated and it's pretty easy to figure out. Target suction pressure, we're going to break up into two different groups. A regular evaporator and high efficiency or oversized evaporator. Now we've all seen the oversized evaporator. You go buy a three ton unit and to get a sear rating, no matter what it is, they'll give you like a four ton coil or four ton air handler, maybe a three and a half ton air handler depending on what sear you're going for. So that would be classified as an oversized or high efficiency evaporator. And the only difference between that and a standard evaporator is going to be the delta T between your return dry bulb temperature, that's just your regular return temperature measured with a regular thermometer, and your saturation temperature, which will translate into your coil pressure. And here's what I mean. When you go onto your gauges, you'll see the pressure for R22, let's say it's around 58 PSI, and then you'll see your temperature, which will be around 32 degrees. All this means is to get your target suction pressure, you take your return temperature, let's say it's 70. 70 degrees dry bulb at the return going into the unit. For a standard evaporator coil, the delta T is going to be 35. So you take your 70 and subtract 35 and you have 35. Now that remaining 35 is the saturation corresponding to the pressure which will be your target. If you look on your gauges you can see around 35 saturation which will be for R22 usually a little green scale in the middle of your gauges will translate into the lower 60s as far as pressure. So you can get your exact measurement off the gauge and that will be your target suction pressure. And I kind of like the idea of having about a 10 degree or 10 percent uh, region of error. Just like you have a plus or five superheat, plus or three subcooling, margin of error. Let's say we have 10%. And if we have, let's say we have 65 PSI as a target, 10% is 6.5. So that would be a 3.25 swing either way. And that'll probably get you in the ballpark of where you want to be. If it gets beyond there, you might suspect there's some sort of issue, maybe low charge. And you would verify that with a superheat or subcooling reading. If it gets too high, maybe you can say it's excess airflow or overcharge, and you verify that with a superheat reading. There's all sorts of ways you can verify it. We can talk about those too, but this is just talking about target pressure. So let's try an oversized evaporator. If we have an oversized evaporator, our delta T is going to drop to 30. It's going to run a higher back pressure which is going to give the compressor a lower compression ratio meaning that the multiplier between the suction pressure and discharge pressure is lower so instead of being let's say three times as high between the suction to discharge which means let's say the suction was 60 that means the discharge would be 180 so it's a three to one compression ratio instead it might be a little bit higher it'd be like 180 and 70 or 180 and 65 and that lower compression ratio allows the compressor to work easier, allowing it to be more efficient, giving you a higher suction pressure with that larger coil. There's some advantages to that. We can talk about that in different videos as well. But for this video, I want to talk about just getting that pressure. So we take that same 70 degrees, instead of subtracting 35, we subtract 30 to get our high efficiency evaporator. And I'm sure these are nominal. There's probably some variations depending on what size of an oversized evaporator because there's different ones. Sometimes they give you three and a half for a three ton matchup. Sometimes they give you fours. 
there's matchups that go nuts. You know, you look at the HRI uh, matchups at the end of your condenser installer's guide, and you'll see that you can match that with a whole ton of different coils and stuff. And I'm sure that this is only a good rule of thumb and not an exact as far as your pressure. It gets pretty close, but most likely not exact because each matchup is slightly different. So we subtract 30 from 70 and we get 40 as our saturation. So that pressure turns out to be, that is in the upper 60s. So as you can see, we've gone from having a target suction pressure in the lower 60s to the upper 60s. You see it makes a little bit of a difference for getting your target pressure. So the only difficulty is gonna be making sure you realize you're dealing with a high efficiency evaporator. And usually what I do is just see what nominal tonnage it is. And that's about the best you can do. Because there's no, there's not gonna be a stamp on the outside of the evaporator that says oversized high efficiency evaporator because it's different for every matchup. But I would just check and see if the tonnage is higher than the one you're dealing with at your heat pump or condenser. And that's about all we get with, you know, target suction pressure. There is, you know, we can go a little bit further with it and say, what about mismatching? Mismatching, this will be the theoretical Cowboys of HVAC part of the video. Mismatching, we're gonna take our 13 sear dry charge unit and we're gonna hook it up to an old 10 sear evaporator or air handler. So does that process then work in reverse? If we have a delta T of 35 for a standard evaporator and 30 for a high efficiency evaporator, will it then go to, let's say 40 if we mismatch with a smaller evaporator? So let's see what happens if we do that. Cause we all know we run lower suction on those older evaporators because they're undersized compared to what we have going through them. It's very easy to flood those evaporators because of the discrepancy between the amount of refrigerant required for a 13 sear matchup and the amount of refrigerant volume in a 10 sear coil. So let's say we subtract 40 from 70 and we're just doing this for shits and giggles. So if we subtract 40 from 70, we get 30. And that puts us in the mid 50s. And now we're below freezing, which makes a little bit of sense, doesn't it? If we have our mismatched, undersized, low sear coil with our 13 sear dry charge unit, or perhaps even I hear York has these four, I guess they're 14 sear, uh, 407C dry charge units. That's something else, isn't it? Is that applicable to this situation? What do you guys think? This is just me thinking outside the box. But I guess you could get a target pressure even though it's sort of useless because you're just sort of trying to make that thing work and you may have to overcharge it just to keep it above freezing. I hope this helped guys. We're talking about target, suction, pressure. On one of the upcoming videos we'll talk about head pressure and it changes a little bit with sear rating. And we'll see what we get into there. If we can do some more cowboys of HVAC. We